uncertainties, uh, not to mention the geographic tension in the Middle East and elsewhere. So this year we give a economic forecast of a growth from negative growth 1.5% to a positive 0.5%. But things are evolving very rapidly. When this budget was prepared, uh, the coronavirus was mainly confined in uh, mainland and Asia, uh, Asian region. But now it is worldwide. It is a worldwide pandemic. So the situation would get worse before it can get better. Um, in face of these challenges, actually the government from last August launched a couple of rounds of measures trying to help the economy. Uh, the four rounds of measures uh, taken together had a total value of over 30 billion. Uh, the budget uh, gave a one-off relief measure of exceeding 120 billion. And before that, the anti-epidemic fund also uh, inject about 30 billion into uh, the economy and the medical and health sector. Um, some of these measures have not been rolled out because the budget is still pending for the approval from the Legislative Council. And even for the four, for the four round of measures announced since August, some of them got approval from the legislature only uh, this month. So things are slowly, slowly uh, coming, uh, luring in. Uh, I would urge the Legislative Council uh, to expedite the scrutiny of the budget and get the budget approved as soon as possible uh, so that we can roll out the measures as quickly as possible to benefit the various sectors. The focus of the budget is to support support enterprises uh, in order to safeguard jobs and to try to stimulate the economy and to relieve the burden, the financial burden on our people in times of difficulty. Uh, I'm going to be very brief in terms of relief measures to enterprises. I do not intend to count them one by one. But in a nutshell, basically, I try to extend and enhance most of the measures announced in the previous Runs. I also launched a special low interest loan with 100% guarantee from the government uh, to help the SMEs. Uh, this is for SMEs from different sectors, not just those hard hit sectors. I'm very pleased to report that uh, the Legislative Council approved this scheme uh, last week. And in fact, we have been in close discussion with the banks with a view to rolling all this out towards the end of April. Uh, the total commitment from the government is 20 billion. And for SMEs, the maximum amount to be borrowed uh, will be 2 million Hong Kong dollars. Uh, basically referencing to their rental and uh, employee wages for six months. Uh, the interest rate is very favorable, 2.5% less than time rate. Um, as for individuals, apart from uh, service tax rebate, uh, waiver for property rates, uh, this year we do, a, we do a very exceptional payment, that is a cash payment of 10000 to each of the Hong Kong permanent residents, age 18 or above. Uh, the target is to start uh, receiving registration uh, at the beginning of summer. Uh, probably in July, and start to effect the payments during summer. In terms of the economy, uh, we have some measures to develop the various pillar industries, namely financial services, wholesaling and trading, uh, tourism, uh, commercial and professional services. Uh, in terms of new engine for future economic growth, the main engine remains innovation and technology. And apart from these two initiatives, what possibly worth mentioning is to try to expand the market reach for Hong Kong businesses. Uh, apart from the Greater Bay Area, the Bell and Road Initiative, 
the TDC under the leadership of the Commerce and Economic Development Bureau uh, is trying very hard to do uh, overseas missions uh, to help Hong Kong enterprises to uh, expand their business overseas. Uh, if I may use financial services as an example, on the securities market, uh, we waive the stamp duty on stock transfer, uh, pay, payable by ETF market makers. We are also going to launch green bonds in the next five years, totaling about $66 billion. And in terms of asset and wealth management business, uh, in order to attract more private equity funds to domicile in Hong Kong, we are going to offer tax concession on carry interest. Uh, paid by these uh, private equity funds. Uh, asset and wealth management is a potential growth area for Hong Kong in the context of the uh, Greater Bay Area and also in the context of uh, stimulating the development and of the innovation and technology sector uh, in Hong Kong and in the neighboring uh, cities. Uh, typically, the the nine cities, nine mainland cities under the GBA initiative. Um, there is another dimension to financial services that is from an average Hong Kong people on the street. Uh, what is in it for me? Uh, so uh, this year, uh, in terms of benefiting the general public uh, in the, uh, full financial services, we lower the public annuities uh, entitlement. I mean, uh, the, eligible, the, the qualification to buy these public annuities uh, from the Hong Kong MA uh, to 60 years old. So uh, providing one more option for middle-class people to plan for their retirement. Uh, we, also, we are also going to issue inflation-linked I-bonds as well as silver bonds uh, to help uh, 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 middle class people and the elderly uh, to give them more options in terms of uh, investing their savings. Uh, we also hope that this could further stimulate the interest uh, for the various sectors, particularly the financial services sector, to tape the uh, silver hair market. Uh, finally, on this, we are going to offer a fixed rate mortgage loan option to home buyers uh, because now the interest rate is very low. So uh, we give people an option if they want to take out a, a mortgage, say for fixed rate for 10 years, 15 years, 20 years, uh, will be at very competitive rates. Um, in terms of new sector uh, innovation and technology this year, we we are going to uh, inject two billion into the reindustrialization funding scheme to enable us to do a match, uh, match funding to encourage uh, high value added uh, industries to come to Hong Kong uh, to do their manufacturing. Uh, we are also uh, exploring the third uh, you know, Hong Kong research customs. The other two clusters which launched last year were biotech as well as artificial intelligence and uh, robotics. The response to the previous two clusters has been overwhelming. Uh, the, the launch of that was deferred because of the social incidents. Uh, we plan to roll this out towards the end of this year. And in addition to these two sectors, the ITB, Innovation Technology Bureau, is actively looking into uh, setting up one more cluster to attract more uh, international Relang research institutes to come to Hong Kong. Um, we also improved the technology voucher program by ex increasing the amount and increasing the funding ratio from the government. Uh, this is a program very popular among the SMEs. Uh, in terms of INT infrastructure, we have earmarked $3 billion for the science park to do their own expansion at the existing campus in Taipo. Uh, the other major INT infrastructure, namely the Lot Ma Chao uh, Loop uh, 
science and technology part is focusing on target. Um, in terms of Greater Bay Area, Bell and Road, to, uh, to keep my remarks very brief, uh, we play a very unique pitching role for international investors uh, wanting to go into the mainland and also for mainland investors trying to, uh, to go abroad, to have allocations in the international markets. We are also enhancing our various financial services, IPO, infrastructure financing, uh, green bonds, etc., uh, to further our competitiveness in this area. We are also actively working with the professional services sector and the SMEs to go global with mainland enterprises by partnering with them together and also uh, going with them to certain uh, business parks, industrial parks set up overseas by the uh, Chinese, by the mainland government. Uh, we are going to help our Hong Kong manufacturers who are interested uh, to uh, explore the setting up of manufacturing facilities there. Um, finally, I would like to uh, touch upon the public finance of Hong Kong. Uh, for the current year, 2019 to 20, uh, we are focusing a very modest deficit. Uh, the deficit was mainly caused by the establishment of the anti-epidemic fund, as well as the forerun of uh, helping measures announced since last August. Going forward, uh, in 2020 to 21, we are forecasting a huge deficit, about 139 billion, highest in absolute amount in the, in the history of Hong Kong, which is about 4.8% of our GDP. But over 120 billion of which are one-off measures including the uh, $10,000 payment, including the tax relief, the property uh, raise waiver, etc. If we take that away and add back the uh, housing reserve brought back to the account, as well as the uh, green bonds to be issued uh, in this year, the def adjusted deficit would be in the order of about $59 billion, which is about 2.8% of our GDP which is okay uh, given the current economic situation. But what is more interesting uh, and require more attention uh, is the medium term public finance of Hong Kong. We are going to see an annual operating deficit of between 48 billion to over 50 billion. Not huge uh, given the total amount of expenditure uh, of Hong Kong, but still something we need to pay attention. On a consolidated basis, taking into account capital revenue and capital expenditure, uh, the consolidated deficit will be quickly reduced to about 16 billion to 7 billion. In the context of a total budget of about 700 billion, I would argue that it is, this is broadly balanced. But on the other hand, we still need to address the deficit in the operating account. So going forward, uh, the government will see that uh, government expenditure will enter into a consolidation period. When in increased expenditure, we need to be more mindful of the long-term affordability. Uh, and also uh, such expenditure must increase in line with the increase in revenue. Um, we may also need to look at how to increase our revenue. Uh, whether to adjust the interest rate, uh, whether to expand the new sources of revenue, and more importantly, to grow our economy, which is more fundamental uh, in terms of bringing in uh, additional revenue to the government. Um, in the future, perhaps, uh, we may also need to uh, reduce gradually the one-off relief measures that have been uh, handing out to the public over the past decade. Um, Final, finally, uh, in terms of challenges, uh, it is the development in the international arena uh, in terms of digital tax and to a larger extent uh, in terms of its impact in Hong to Hong Kong is the global minimum effective tax. 
I'm going to invite a panel of experts, uh, business leaders, and academia to assist me to look into this matter and to advise the government uh, the best way forward uh, in order to protect, uh, not just to protect our revenue, but make us more competitive in the new tax era. Uh, separately, uh, I, I'm going to uh, allocate about 10% from the future fund to allow Hong Kong to invest in, our, in projects, companies with a Hong Kong nieces in order to better use our reserve to help grow our economy and enhance our competitiveness. Because in the future, the money we park with the Hong Kong MA, Hong Kong Monetary Authority, are investing basically overseas. Uh, the, the reason being uh, the money in the exchange fund, the primary objective is to defend the linked exchange rate. So uh, if we were to invest locally uh, using that money, at time of difficulties, when we need to use money uh, and liquidate those investments, we would further sell down the market, which is counterproductive. That is the logic of not investing in Hong Kong in the past. Now that we have a fiscal reserve of the over 11,000 uh, billion, perhaps step by step, we should take some of this money to invest uh, in areas that could enhance Hong Kong's long-term competitiveness and benefit our economy and our people. So uh, thank you for your patience. Uh, thank you for listening to me. I would love to, uh, to listen to your comments and have more interactive dis discussions. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Yes. Thank you, Paul, for uh, giving us such a, a candid and detailed um, information about what the government is doing, how the government is thinking about this, uh, this terrible situation, economic situation that we are uh, facing in Hong Kong. And thank you for uh, agreeing to take some questions. Um, to members, members who are online, please feel free to actually send your questions uh, on the, the, the public chat box or, or the Zoom Q&A, and I will be receiving them by, by WhatsApp, and I'll be reading them out. Uh, that way. So, uh, Paul, can I start off with the first question, which is uh, actually from the Hong Kong General Chamber of Commerce. Uh, and the, the question is this, with countries around the world going into lockdown, there are a lot of concerns that Hong Kong businesses simply will not be able to survive the coming months as demand has collapsed and cash flow is rapidly evaporating. There's an imminent danger that this will lead to massive layoffs, no matter how much employers want to hold on to their people. The previous measures that the financial secretary rolled out have helped to delay this, but with many already badly hit sectors like the retail, hospitality, and leisure businesses now being asked to further limit their hours, they simply will not be able to make enough to pay their bills. The UK and Germany have rolled out a wide range of measures to help businesses stay afloat, as well as for, as well as for the employees who lose their income, such as paying part of the employee's wages or cash grants for the worst affected businesses. We understand uh, we cannot expect government to rescue everyone, but the government considered similar measures as the UK, or perhaps having the government, employer, employers and employees all helping each other to, to survive by sharing the burden, such as paying part of the SME salaries and encouraging employees to take no pay leave. That's uh, from the Hong Kong General Chamber of Commerce. Yeah, thank you, Aaron. Um... Yes, business, big or small, are facing tremendous uh, operating difficulties given the current economic situation. Uh, that is why the government has been launching uh, several rounds of measures in order to help. And these measures could be classified into two broad categories. One is sector specific. Uh, say for example, in the previous rounds of measures, uh, there are measures to help the tourism industries. Uh, in the recent anti-epidemic fund, uh, the government has identified more than 20 sectors to assist and deploy that 30 billion into different uh, sectors. These are more sector-specific uh, assistances. Uh, apart from that, we, are also, uh, we have also launched broad-based measures. Uh, 
the reduction in government rent fees and charges is one example. Uh, to the reduction of profit tax, the waiver of uh, property rates is another. Uh, for SMEs in this difficult period, uh, liquidity is very important, which is life back. That is why uh, we have all together launched three rounds of liquidity support. The first round was back in uh, the first round was back in 2018 by raising the uh, the amount and the the amount uh, to be borrowed under the government 80 percent loan guarantee scheme, uh, also enabling people uh, to repay the loan for a longer period. And last year in 2019, we launched a 90 percent government loan scheme. And in the budget, uh, we launched a 100 percent. The idea is to to help SMEs to weather for this difficulty uh, by providing them with much needed liquidity. The banks have, by and large, the banks have been quite uh, cooperative and there is a mechanism established between the Hong Kong MA and the banks and the business sector. They meet uh, regularly to, to ensure the feedback from the business sector are properly taken into consideration by the banks. And the banks will continue to take a more accommodative attitude towards the SMEs. Uh, we have also, uh, I mean, the Hong Kong MA has also revised downward twice the counter cyclical uh, buffer to release more liquidity to the market. Um, in terms of support to the SMEs, in terms of wages, um, we are operating on a, a different system. In the UK, you know, they have a uh, pay-as-you-earn tax system. Uh, in Singapore, they have a central potent fund system. So it is comparatively easier for the government to, uh, to get hold of the, the employment situations and there is an established channel for such payments to be made. Uh, in the Hong Kong context, uh, we do not have a pay-as-you-earn tax system. Uh, our potent fund system is a, not a centralized one, but uh, rests with uh, more than 10 trustees. So the situation is quite challenging. So what we have been attempting to do is to by reducing the fees and charges, by sector-specific subsidies, by providing liquidities, uh, help the SMEs to, uh, to survive these difficulties. If these SMEs uh, can survive this difficulty, they, they still need to, uh, to retain uh, their employees and uh, the experience Experience back in 1997, in, I mean back in 1998 to 2003 when we were suffering from Asian financial crisis and SARS. Uh, instead of uh, laying off people, uh, perhaps a uh, certain form of no belief or salary reduction uh, in order to keep the employees maybe a more tenable uh, proposition uh, for the employer and employees, this we, we do think uh, is without better alternative, this is one of the uh, one of the measures happening in the market. Yeah. Thank, thank you, Paul. Um, the, the next question is from the Chinese General Chamber of Commerce, uh, and it reads, the government will continue to support Hong Kong enterprises and professional services uh, sectors seize opportunities brought about by the Belt and Road Initiative. Would the government consider further extending the subsidy of the BUD Fund to encompass all the countries and regions along the Belt and Road? Will there be any measures to assist matching Hong Kong companies and investment projects of the BRI? Uh, 
sorry, Aaron, going back to the first question, uh, you know, the epidemic situation in Hong Kong is getting uh, quite serious lately because of the uh, uh, imported cases. Um, the government may need to uh, explore further measures to fight the epidemic. And in those situations, uh, along with those measures, uh, there may need to be additional measures to help specific sectors uh, that we would not rule out. And uh, we would take note of the suggestions of the chamber. Uh, going forward uh, in tackling the situation while we, we monitor the situation on an ongoing basis, uh, we will give careful considerations to, uh, to the suggestions that you, you just made. Uh, yeah. Going back to your second question, uh, for supporting SMEs, the bud fund at the moment is basically uh, helping the SMEs to to develop their brand and develop their market on the mainland of China, on the mainland, as well as uh, jurisdictions which have free trade agreement with us, uh, we do think that in business we need to apply our resources to where we have the competitive advantage. It seems to us if those jurisdiction has have a free trade agreement with us, then it is easier for our SMEs and business to, to tap the market. So the, the subsidy go along with that uh, mixed commercial sense. Uh, there is another support for the SMEs, that is the SME marketing fund. Uh, the total amount of subsidy can be as high as $800,000. That does not have a uh, limitation on jurisdiction. So the SMEs can still apply for the SME marketing fund to different jurisdictions. Um, in terms of matching uh, Hong Kong SMEs with overseas business, uh, this is definitely something uh, on our agenda. Uh, in the past two years, uh, with the assistance of the Trade Development Council, uh, the Hong Kong SAR government uh, has sent a few delegations uh, to different parts of the world. And every time uh, with these delegations, we do we try to do the one-on-one -on -one business matching uh, between the Hong Kong delegates and local business. Uh, we also, uh, on our official trips to different countries, uh, we invite those companies and startups to come to Hong Kong. FinTech is one of those examples. I still remember when I went to Israel, yeah, I invite them. Uh, to come to Hong Kong to work with our Hong Kong startups, the response has been quite encouraging. And we have seen, uh, particularly, say, for example, in the fintech sector, <coughs> excuse me, quite a uh, significant number of startups are from overseas and they are working with our local uh, startups. Um, we are also launching a, an initiative since last year that is to to help Hong Kong companies to partner with mainland companies to go overseas to tap the opportunities together. And going forward, uh, knowing that uh, the mainland government is going to set up uh, industrial parks uh, in certain Bell and Road countries, um, we are working with them uh, through the uh, Ministry of Commerce to afford, uh, to afford uh, uh, priority and incentives for Hong Kong uh, uh, manufacturers and companies who are interested to also set up there. So uh, we would be we will be very happy to further uh, our work on 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 that fund. Yeah, fantastic. And um, <clears throat> regarding the answer to your first question, uh, here here at the chamber, we will certainly put our heads together. There is. Uh, um, a bigger wave of uh, infection that has come from from uh, the imported, mm -hmm. and 
businesses are really facing a second round of difficulty. Uh, mm -hmm. So we'll certainly put our heads together also with the other chambers and, and come back to you. Um, the next question is from the Federation of Hong Kong Industries. Uh, and it says, the one-off measures proposed in the budget are timely support for Hong Kong enterprises, but their ultimate survival hinges on the government's ability to enhance the long-term competitiveness of Hong Kong. Could you please share with us the long-term vision of the government in this regard? For example, the plans to upskill the local labor force and enhance Hong Kong's attractiveness as a location for regional headquarters. Hong Kong as a location for a regional headquarters is something very important. Yeah. Hong Kong is a very important gateway. And uh, indeed, a uh, uh, very important gateway for uh, mainland companies uh, via Hong Kong to go global. And global companies via Hong Kong to go into the mainland. Uh, in this respect, over the years, we have implement quite a number of initiatives. Uh, say, for example, for the corporate treasury center, we offer uh, tax incentive. Uh, say, for example, we enhance our reinsurance uh, regime uh, to help uh, these companies to use Hong Kong as their risk management and uh, captive insurance hub. Uh, we are also promoting the legal services, the dispute resolution services, uh, which is also very important. Uh, going forward, going forward, I think the development of Hong Kong must be seen in the context of our role in the Greater Bay Area uh, in a number of ways. Uh, Greater Bay Area, 11 cities, uh, 70 million people, 1.7 trillion US dollar market. So in terms of market, tremendous opportunities for Hong Kong. Uh, if I can use financial services sector as an example, uh, the tech sectors in this area, the GBA area, can use Hong Kong to list their business. That's why we change our listing rules to allow weighted vote, uh, companies with weighted voting right structures to be listed on a stock exchange. It has been quite successful in the past two years. Um, another wave of growth for the financial service sector is the uh, asset management and wealth management services. Uh, because uh, GBA is the most affluent region, one of the most affluent region in the mainland. Uh, this will give tremendous opportunity to uh, wealth and asset management sector. Um, innovation and technology is another area, uh, future direction for Hong Kong. We have committed over 100 billion Hong Kong dollars in the past few years. Uh, a lot of those expenditure are yet to be incurred uh, because it takes time. Uh, the result uh, of that investment yet to be seen because it takes time. But I do believe we we continue to press ahead and work hard smartly. Uh, this is tremendous opportunity for us. Uh, we have our competitive uh, advantage in terms of research in our universities in terms of uh, the financing, in terms of legal services, intellectual property rights. Uh, the mainland, say for example, uh, Shenzhen has tech giants, very good prototype uh, facilities, excellent uh, manufacturing in the neighboring area. So if we can work together, uh, Hong Kong uh, and GBA together can be an international innovation and technology sector. So financial services, innovation, and technology. But only these two would not be enough. Another area which we need to play smart is logistic, aviation. Uh, well, as we all know, uh, container full put in Hong Kong decline. Uh, but on the other hand, uh, the aviation hub of Hong Kong has been gaining, uh, has been uh, uh, has been expanding very rapidly. And this is high value added area. Uh, we have auctioned a parcel of land last year. And the entire, I mean, the fee runway system in the Hong Kong International Airport is doing, being built on progress. 
when all these facilities are complete, uh, Hong Kong would be an ideal uh, hub in the region in terms of high value rate, high value added uh, uh, aviation logistics. Um, I mentioned about the job in container throughput, yes. But on the other hand, in terms of marine insurance, in terms of using Hong Kong as a place for registration of ships, we do see tremendous opportunities. That's why we, we are going to amend the Inland Revenue Ordinance to allow us to tap the opportunities. But apart from all this, I think what is also important is that nowadays for for Hong Kong, for our youth, uh, it is important to have quality career choices. Uh, not everyone likes to be lawyers, accountants, uh, professionals, uh, financiers. Some may like to pursue their interests in culture, in performing arts, in other areas. Um, we will continue our investment in the arts and culture sector. Uh, apart from the hardware like the West Kowloon Cultural uh, Authority area. Um, in the past few years, we have devoted a substantial amount into design industry, into the cinema industries. A lot more can be done. And we have also launched program to train talents in this, this few areas. So I remain optimistic about the future economic development of Hong Kong. Uh, I think what is important for us is that in the past year, uh, because of the social uh, unrest, uh, certain deep seated issues have been revealed. Uh, this has to be addressed. Uh, carefully, patiently. Um, we need to do that. And on the other hand, in face of the tremendous economic challenges, perhaps uh, while addressing all those, we need to temporarily set aside the differences to work together to weather through the current economic difficulties. Thank you, Paul. Um, I agree with you. The Greater Bay Area is of paramount importance to us. We are ideally situated to take advantage of all the opportunities that will come from the Greater Bay Area. And uh, as long as we have a first mover advantage, I, I think we could uh, change the face of, of how Hong Kong does business, not only for the sectors that you were talking about, but as you rightly say, you know, a lot of people don't want to become doctors and lawyers only. They want to pursue other interests. And this gives us um, 11 cities and, and uh, 70 million people who uh, would certainly be open to many more careers, many more industries. And, and I look forward to Hong Kong taking advantage of the opportunities in the Greater Bay Area. Um, Paul, the next question comes from the Chinese Manufacturers Association. It says, this is Jimmy Ng of the Welfare Technologies. My question is, we appreciate that the government has taken decisive action to support local enterprises hard hit by the novel coronavirus outbreak. However, the financial bu budget falls short of measures to support Hong Kong manufacturers operating in the Pearl River Delta, who are facing severe challenges in this extremely tough environment. In this connection, will the government come up with more targeted measures to help Hong Kong manufacturers in the PRD to tide over the current difficulties? Uh, Aaron, thank you for the question. Well, if those uh, manufacturers has a Hong Kong nieces, you know, has a Hong Kong company, have a, then our various uh, funding schemes, even the loan schemes can benefit them. But if they do not have a Hong Kong nieces, that would be very difficult. Uh, at the end of the day, I think uh, the more ready help to them could be the uh, local authorities on the mainland. Uh, if there are ways that we can help, uh, certainly we, we will try. Uh, on a collective basis, if there are policies of the mainland that can be modified to help these Hong Kong manufacturers. Uh, as the government, we, we are happy to take this up to help do the lobbying. Uh, but in terms of uh, 
in terms of specific fiscal measures, I'm afraid that this company must need to have a Hong Kong leases. Thank you. Um, the next question comes from the Chinese Enterprises Association. This is Dr. Er, uh, Chief Economist from the Bank of China. The Financial Secretary proposed in the budget very timely measures to support enterprises, safeguard jobs, stimulate the economy, and smoothen livelihoods. In response to the coronavirus outbreak, what are the key tasks that require active support from the financial sector in Hong Kong? Also, Given the complexity and uncertainty of the current economic situation, may I ask the Financial Secretary to share with us the next steps that the government will take to support enterprises, especially for SMEs, in coping with the challenges? Uh, thank you, Aaron. Um, well, as I mentioned earlier, the four rounds of measures, the anti epidemic fund and the budget, uh, trying to support the enterprises, particularly the SMEs, some initiatives are sector specific. Uh, some initiatives uh, target uh, individual employees in certain sectors. Uh, some measures are more across the board, uh, apart from uh, uh, more across the board, uh, such as the liquidity support, the fees and charges raised, uh, tax reduction, etc. At the moment, the first and foremost is still fighting the virus, uh, particularly lately. Uh, just Search in uh, infected cases, uh, particularly from uh, imported cases. The government is seriously looking into the matter and is considering rolling out additional uh, social distancing measures. Uh, in the process, certain sectors unavoidably will be affected. And for these sectors, um, the government is considering. Uh, uh, considering uh, whether and how to help them sail through this difficulty. Um, when we uh, look into different measures to enable uh, social differencing, social distancing, to discourage congregation of people, uh, the, com the uh, complementary uh, helping measures will also be on our radar screen to consider. Um, after the epidemic, I think it is important for us to relaunch Hong Kong. Uh, not just because of the epidemic, but also because of the events uh, last year. We need to rebuild the confidence of the international community in Hong Kong. We need to promote a better understanding of the situation in Hong Kong. And I'm afraid we cannot wait until uh, the epidemic is over. We need to do the preparation uh, in the meantime. So in the budget, we have allocated resources for that. Uh, in the government, we have a multi real multi-department task force uh, looking into this uh, but that cannot be achieved by the government alone uh, we need the support of the business sector and the various stakeholders um, my colleagues should have been in touch with the chambers uh, in terms of preparing for the uh, relaunching of Hong Kong uh, I do appeal to the chambers to help us. And apart from that, uh, in terms of domestic economy, uh, the 10,000 payout to each uh, Hong Kong permanent resident, aging 18 or above, is an exceptional measure. We should all make good use of it. Uh, I would look to the uh, business sector to come up with incentive programs, schemes, to encourage people uh, uh, to come out to spend, to help revive our economy uh, when the epidemic situation is, uh, is under control. Yeah. 
Paul, I'm, I'm reading my uh, WhatsApps when all the questions are coming for, from uh, members uh, online, and a lot of them are regarding the uh, SME financing guarantee scheme. Okay. Uh, uh, if I could just um, put them all together and, and condense the question in, in the uh, interest of time, uh, a lot of them are saying that uh, it's a great uh, scheme from the government to guarantee uh, the SMEs uh, financing. However, they find it very difficult actually to be able to uh, get that guarantee because there's a long lineup at the banks. The banks are inundated. The banks are uh, still asking um, if there is uh, if if the if they're qualified. It's it's complicated to get that here at the chamber. We've tried to. Uh, help SMEs and trying to guide them through the process, but a lot of SMEs are still saying they're finding it increasingly difficult uh, to be able to get to this finan SME finance and guarantee scheme. Could you shed any light on how they, you, we could help them uh, expedite the situation and, and help their cash flow? Actually, I had a meeting with uh, the Hong Kong Mortgage Corporation and the Hong Kong MA just yesterday morning uh, to to get an update of the preparation and to give steer as to the way forward. Um, because this is indeed a very important life but for SMEs at the moment, liquidity. Uh, I have heard from the market about uh, the, uh, the processing time required by the bank in order to process loan applications and some complaints about the difficulties in getting loan approval. Uh, under this 100% guarantee scheme, uh, the loan, although land for the banks, are on the books of the Hong Kong SAR government for the uh, mortgage corporation. So uh, for the banks, uh, in terms of processing the application, it is more on the eligibility of the applicant. Uh, so compared to the 80%, 90%, uh, guarantee loan cases, this would be comparatively uh, a lot more straightforward and easier uh, easier uh, process to administer. Uh, I have asked the Hong Kong MA to ask the banks to come up with a performance pledge in terms of within how long, no matter the, uh, the application is approved or not, you should let the borrower know. So there, we are working on uh, asking the banks to give a performance patch in this respect, so that for the SMEs, there is a certainty as to when you will be notified about the result of the application. Um, the MA uh, and the Mortgage Corp are very eager to roll out this scheme as soon as possible and to ease the administration as quickly as possible. Um, uh, because these loans are on the books of the government instead of the banks, uh, the pep preparation of the legal documentation are very different from the previous 80%, 90% loan scheme. So they do need a, a few weeks time to sort out all those details. But suffice it to say that we are as keen as you are to roll out this scheme as soon as possible and to make it as simple as possible. And the initial, the initial commitment from the government is, uh, is $20 billion, uh, depending on the uptake. Uh, if this is really helpful to the SME, is the uptake is, uh, is, is overwhelming. Uh, I stand ready to raise the, uh, the commitment ceiling. Thank you, Paul. I, you know, we're um, uh, in the interest of time, I, I'm going to uh, read out one more question. I apologize if, uh, to, to members online and uh, anybody on, in the business community online who is, uh, has sent their questions through. If I haven't been able to get to your question, um, as you've seen, the financial secretary has been incredibly candid and open um, in expressing and very detailed in expressing uh, all his thoughts and, and answers to your question. So I apologize if I can't get to uh, all the questions. Um, the last question is from Todd Hancock, the chairman of the Canadian Chamber of Commerce. Uh, Secretary, Secretary Chan, 
Thank you for your session today and for the many initiatives that the government is supporting. Unfortunately, these measures don't seem to address the challenge that is real-time facing many companies, small and large. Many other countries are putting measures not only to help SMEs, but also larger companies get through this period to, to try to avoid mass layoffs. Companies are facing real cash flow issues across the many sectors right now. If the layoffs that we are hearing are being prepared by many companies come to be, then this will be a very heavy longer term setback for the Hong Kong economy. What is the Hong Kong government doing to avoid this pending challenge and support companies of all sizes? We in the business community are very concerned that the measures are not really reflecting the reality of the short term now situation. Um. Yeah, thank you, Aaron, and thank you, uh, Mr. Hancock. Um, we have been emphasizing SME all along, uh, but understandably, uh, in times of difficulties, uh, it is more challenging for the SME to cope with. And knowing that SME accounting for more than 90% of our businesses and employing uh, almost 45% of uh, the working population. Uh, I hope you do understand that the emphasis on SME is understandable. Uh, that doesn't mean we rule out uh, the large businesses uh, because for many of the across the board measures that I mentioned, uh, the tax, uh, the rates, waiver, the tax reduction and certain charges, uh, say for example, the uh, electricity charge subsidy, the effluent discharge subsidy. Uh, when you calculate it, it is quite a substantial amount. And I would say that uh, the major beneficiary of uh, those, uh, uh, those subsidy are larger enterprises uh, in absolute amount. But I keep an open mind. Uh, uh, if uh, the business sector has additional suggestions, I, I'm, I'm happy to look at it. I'm happy to look at it to see whether it is uh, practicable. Uh, if I may share another example, that is the uh, recent uh, announcement by the Hong Kong Airport Authority. Yeah, uh, the one billion package rolled out by the uh, Airport Authority of Hong Kong. Uh, a certain substantial sum goes to the aviation industry. We all, we all understand because of the uh, travel alert and the ban on the international traveling. Uh, the help is going to the aviation industry, which is understandably the bigger players. So at the end of the day, it is the need uh, of the sector. Uh, the specific suggestions uh, to be considered. Uh, I'll keep an open mind. Well, th thank you so much, uh, Financial Secretary, um, <clears throat> for being so open and candid and discussing the various measures that you've introduced to help the business community during these very difficult times. Uh, we've learned a lot from you today and we hope today's challenges uh, and exchanges with members uh, were as useful for you. As I mentioned earlier, the entire business community stands ready to share our views and expertise in helping Hong Kong bounce back once the virus has been brought under control. In the meantime, if any of the viewers have any ideas that we, uh, on how we can best accomplish this, please send uh, to your respective chambers secretariat so that they can be included in a submission to the Financial Secretary's Office. Thank you all for joining us today in this uh, webinar. Stay safe, and I hope we'll be able to meet soon again. And thank you so much, Financial Secretary, for, for, for your time today. Oh, uh, my pleasure. Yeah, thank you, Aaron. Thank you, everyone, for, for your participation. Much appreciated. Thank you. Yeah, thank you.